Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. 2019, question nine. So a long, a long question on um, trig um, in paper two. The diagram below shows a triangular patch of ground, triangle SGH, with SH equal to 58, GH equal to 30, and the angle GHS equal to 68. The circle is a helicopter pad. It is the in-circle of triangle SGH and has center P, okay? And an in-circle you can see sits right inside that triangle. Find SG. Give your answer a meter correct to one decimal place. Well, my starting point for any question on a triangle is, is it a right an angled triangle or is it not? OK, and why is that my, my starting question? Well, on page 16 of the log tables, you'll see it's split up. The bottom is right angled trig. The top is non right angled trig. OK, um, yes, you can use these on right angles, uh, triangles as well, but not vice versa. So what does that mean? Well, that means you can only use sine, cos and tan and Pythagoras theorem on a right angled triangle. OK, so come back to my question. I cannot assume this is a right angle, um, any of these, because it didn't tell me they were. OK, well, that's not that 68. OK, um, so you can never assume it's a right angle, even if it looks like it's in the diagram. OK, it either has to have the symbol, which is that one, or the square, which is that one, or it has to tell you that it's right angled. OK, so therefore, this is non right angled triangle. So area is area. That means I've only two tools to solve it, either the sine rule or the cosine rule. OK, so to pick between them, well, you'll see their diagram. If it's they call the side small letters, they call the angle big letters. The cosine rule is mainly got information about sides in it. It has one angle. The sine rule, uh, you only ever use two bits at a time. It doesn't really matter which two bits, but there's two sides and two angles. OK, so um, one of them isn't more right than the other. Both of them will give you the same answer if you have enough information to use either one. OK, but in a question, you tend to only have information for one. So when I'm looking at this, I see a side. I have information about a side. I want to find a side and I have only one angle. So that's lending itself to the cosine rule. OK, and the cosine rule a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. OK, um, the only thing you have to be careful of is whatever angle you're taking in your question, cos a, the side across from it has to be over here on its own. OK, because there's an inherent relationship between angles and the sides across from them. OK, so if this is the only angle I have in my question, so that obviously has to be side A. OK, but that has to be angle A. And of course, across from it then has to be little a. OK, that suits for us because SG is the side that we want to find. OK, so therefore SG squared is equal to, it doesn't matter which is B and C. OK, that's not going to matter. So it's going to be equal to 30 squared. Uh, plus 58 squared minus twice 30 times 58 times cos 68 degrees. Okay, um, all numbers, so all can be in theory put into your calculator all in one go. I'm just checking my calculator is in degrees. It's not, so I'm hitting shift mode setup and three for degrees. Okay, so 30 squared plus 58 squared minus 2 times 30 times 58 times cos 68 degrees. And I got 2960 for that. 0.369. Okay. SG squared. 
OK, um, keep an eye on the types of numbers here. You'd expect SG to be in the ballpark of these numbers. So, yes, it could go up to 100 and something, um, even 200 and something, but it definitely won't go up to 2,900. OK, so that's your flag then to remember that, that over here on the left is, is a squared number. So I obviously have to get the square root of 2960 to get the length of um, SG. So go square root and use that answer button in your in your question A and S because then it keeps all the decimal points in it. So 54.409 is what I have or to one decimal place 54.4 and always have your units. So 54.4 meters is what I get up here for um, that side S or GS or SG. OK, so the cosine rule. Find the angle HSG. Where am I? HSG. So I need this angle. OK, so this is a case now where either the sine rule or the cosine rule would work. OK, so let me explain. So I have the, the cosine rule written down here, so I'll use that one first. OK, so to find this angle, I'd be solving it for A here, okay? And I might even do that because actually that's the hardest use of the cosine rule that you could be asked, okay? And then there's your side, a side, a side, a side, so we have our A, B, C, okay? So cosine rule, perfect. You could also use the sine rule because you'll often see me when I'm doing the side rule, if, if I need this angle here, then I need the side across from it, that's good. And I need another angle side pair. OK, because that's what the sine rule is. So if you remember the sine rule, it was a side over the sine of the angle across from it, a side over the sine of the angle across from it, a side over the sine of the angle across from it. OK, so I've picked these two pairs here. OK, they are also equal to 58 over the sine of that angle up there. But I know nothing about that angle up there, so that's why I can't use that side. OK, so let's let's try the sine rule for now. So A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. And of course, it doesn't matter um, which one I use. So 30 over is equal to, where am I, 54.4. over the sine of 68. Okay, so um, I hope that makes sense. You see what I want is on the bottom. You can also use the sine rule where you just flip them. So sine A over 30 is equal to sine 68 over 54.4. Uh, Perfectly fine to flip them as long as you flip both sides. Okay. Um, you didn't have to do that because it doesn't matter. We're going to cross multiply. Well, let's not cross multiply. Let's just bring that 30 up here. OK, or if you want to see the maths, I'm multiplying both sides by 30. He cancels. So I have sine A is equal to 30 times sine 68 over 54.4. So let me put that into the calculator. So hit the fraction button, 30 sine 68, oh, I didn't close the bracket, over sine, no, over 54.4. And I got 0 0.5113146 for that. Okay, so that's sine A. We want A the angle. Okay. So how do I get rid of sine then? Well, the opposite of sine is sine inverse. So if I get the sine inverse of both sides, sine and sine inverse cancel. So you're left with just A, the angle. So sine inverse, and again, I use that answer button down the bottom beside the equals because it remembers all the decimal points. And I'm getting 30.75 degrees. Um, and it's to do decimal points. So that's how I would do it with the sine rule. OK, I'm going to do it with this cosine rule for you, if that's OK, because um, because it, people make mistakes with it. OK, and I want to show you the mistake that, that people make. Um, 
So rather than explain it, it's actually easier to show you. Okay, so we had worked out he was, what, 54.4, I think. Okay, and I had to find this angle. Okay, so the cosine rule, uh, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. Okay, so if the angle I need is this one here, then of course he has to be my a. So you have to make sure, that's the first mistake people make, they put the wrong side over there. You have to make sure that it's this side here, the one across from the angle that you're going to put over there. Okay, if for example, you put 58 over there, then what you end up finding is the size of this angle here. Okay, if of course you put 54.4 here, you'll end up finding 68 degrees for your answer. Okay, so the angle you're going to find is the one that's opposite the side you put over here. So that's the first place you can make a mistake. After that, it doesn't matter what's B and C. So 58 squared plus 54.4 squared minus two times 58 times 54.4 cos of A. Okay, let's start working some of this out. So 30 squared is 900. Okay, now this is the other mistake people make, okay? they put all of this part into the calculator, okay? That is a big no, 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 okay? You cannot do that. And the reason you cannot do it is because this part here belongs to cos. The 2BC cos A is all one number, okay? And BOMDAS dictates that we have to multiply all them together before we can do the subtraction because does not multiply come before subtraction in the, the letters bomb das. Okay, so therefore you can't break up this number here and just do this little bit of it. Okay, so all you can do is do this part. So 58 squared plus 54.4 squared, and that is, 6323.36, okay? Now, I can go two multiply by 58, multiply by 54.4 and get a 6310.4 cos A, okay? That's fine. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Now, what you do then is you bring this one over this side by division. So there you get 900 minus 6323.36, and that would be equal to minus 6310.4 cos A. 900 minus 6323.36. And of course, you're going to get a minus number. So minus 5423.36 equals minus 6310.4 cos A. Okay, divide across by the number in front of cos A, because we're trying to solve for A, so we keep stripping away from around the A. So divide it by minus three, six, three, one, zero, point four. Okay, and I get no point eight five. 9432 equals cos A, okay? And just like before, we'll get the cos inverse of both sides to get rid of that because we want A the angle. So then just do cos inverse of angle and it's equal to 30.747 degrees. And I can't remember what the question says, correct to two decimal places. So 30.75 degrees equals A. Okay, so the exact same answer that we got here. Okay, so that's it using the cosine rule. That's it using the sine rule. Now, the reason I did it out both ways, there was a few reasons. One is to show you the, the possible errors um, that you can get with the cosine rule. The other was to, I suppose, um, show you with the maths example that the sine rule and the cosine rule gives you the same answer. Okay, so it's not which one is the right one to use. The question is always, which one do you have enough information to use, okay? And if you prefer the sign rule, for example, try it out, make sure you only ever have one unknown. And if you only have one unknown, then you can use the sign rule. And if it's not the sign rule, then chances are it's the cosine rule. Okay, uh, part C then.
Find the area of the triangle SGH. That's SGH. Okay. So again, the log tables, we have a formula for the area of a non-right angled triangle. In general, we cannot use half the base by the perpendicular height for these triangles. Okay. Because we've no perpendicular height. Okay. So in a triangle, he would be my base, but I need some sort of line coming up, which would be to here for my perpendicular height. Okay. I don't have it. He could be my base, but again, I'd need a perpendicular height. And equally, he can be your base, but you'd need him for your perpendicular height. Okay. So can't use that one generally in a non right angle triangle. Okay. Which is why they have half AB sine C. So just to explain half AB sine C uh, and, and the errors that could be made with that one. Um, I could also write it down as half AC sine B. And of course, it could also be written as half BC sine A. OK, so what's happening in all of these? Well, I, I'm going to do this one first. So it's half of A, B sine C. OK, so the angle that you take in it has to be what's called the included angle. So it's the angle that lies between the two sides. OK, so if you take the sides A, B, then your angle has to be sine C. That's why it's perfectly OK to, all, to either take half AC as long as you take the sine of the included angle, which is B in this case. Or, of course, we can do BC and it has to be the included angle A. OK, so go back to our question. We have two angles. We have this one and we're after finding this one. OK, so good practice in maths when you have multiple options like this is to not use the values you worked out where possible, where possible, use the ones that were previously given in the question. And you see, if I take half of this side by this side and this included angle, I'm not using any of the values I worked out. Um, I'm using their values, okay? So that's good practice in maths, just in case, in case we made a mistake along the way. Okay, so the formula for area, straight from the log tables, is half of AB sine C. OK, so don't get it all hung up on which side is ABC. Just take two sides and take the included angle. So 30 by 58. By the sine of 68, was it? Yeah, the sine of 68. OK, so let me put that into the calculator. So a half by 30 by 58 by sine. 68. And for the area of that circle, I got 806. 806.64995. Okay, so to two decimal places, 806.65 meters squared. Okay, uh, just interestingly, to give you a feel for marks. In this question, this was worth 10 marks. I think this was a 55 mark question, if I remember right. This was 10 marks. This was 10 marks. This was 15 marks. So you already have 15, 25, 35 marks done out of the 55 mark question with those two parts. So in many cases, not always, but in many cases, the marks are always stacked towards the end, okay? Um, and I think there was one, two, three, four pieces left and there were five marks each. Okay, so D part one, find the area of the triangle HSP in terms of OR, where OR is the radius of the helicopter. Find the area of the triangle HSP. Okay. It's okay. Mm. I'm just gonna copy the diagram. See what they're talking about. So we want the triangle HSP. Is that okay? So get the area of this triangle. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so I look at that, it's again not a right angle to triangle. So in theory, you could do half AB sine C, okay, in theory. Okay, so you would be half of 58 by this line, which I don't know, sine mm, that angle there. Not the 68, but that one. This is the kicker. It says in terms of R. So I have to somehow bring R into the question, okay? So half AB sine C isn't doing that, okay? But you can see there's a theorem on your course that says radius to a tangent um, will always form 90 degrees, okay? So in other words, when you bring a, a radius out to a tangent line like it has here, you always form right angles, which means that line there is perpendicular to this base. So now this is an example where I can use the area is equal to half the base by the perpendicular height. OK, um, so it's a half of the base, which is 58 by the perpendicular height, which is R. And half of 58 is what? 29 R. So that's the area in terms of R, okay? Which means you'll have R in your answer. Okay, that was five marks. Part two, show that the area of SGH in terms of R can be written by, can be written as 71.2 R meters squared. Hmm. Okay. So how do I get the area of this triangle using ORs? Okay, well, I somehow have to, you would think, use this one. Okay. Um, is, can I split this triangle up into any other way and somehow use ORs? Okay, so my intuition is telling me if I drop a line into that corner, I form three uh, triangles and then bring a radius out to that tangent. Okay, and there's R. And then can't I bring a radius out to this tangent? And that again is R. Okay, so let's get the area of the pink one. It's a half 30 by R. So that's equal to 15 R. And that one is equal to a half of 54.4 by R is equal to 27.2 or and of course from before we have 29 or and that's from before okay therefore the area of the triangle SGH is equal to 15 or plus 27.2 or plus 29 or so that's equal to 15 plus 29 plus 27.2 and I'm getting 71.2 ors meter squared. Okay, um, because it was part one and part two, always have the uh, have at the back of your head that part one could very easily lead on to part two. Okay. And there's a part three, so I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't read it yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if these two lead on to part three, which is find the value of or. Give your answer in meters correct to one decimal place. Okay. Didn't we find out the area of that triangle? So the area of that triangle is 806.65.
806.65. Okay, which is also equal to, what did we find it out? The last one, 71.2 uh, or as well. Okay. Also, guys, also remember that if you can't work out this part, it has already given you the answer. Okay. So make sure you try the part that comes after it because chances are it might choose that when they give it to you in a previous part. Okay. Let's solve this for R. That's not difficult. It's algebra. So R is equal to, so 806, 806.65 divided by 71.2. And I'm getting R to be 11.329 um, decimal places. So R is equal to 11.3 meters. Okay. So I hope that's okay. Okay. So the last part, a good long question. Okay. So again, that was all, the three of those parts were equal to five marks each. The last part, ST is a vertical pole at the point S. Okay, so there's my triangle that we've just been working with. There's my circle in the middle of it. Okay, and now we have, they're making it into a 3D shape. We have an ST pole um, coming up here. The angle of elevation of the top of the pole from the point P is 14 degrees. The angle of elevation, so the angle looking up from P, that's what that means. Angle of elevation is looking up, so it's at the point P. So that angle there is 14 degrees. Find the height of the pole. Okay, give your answer in meters, correct to one decimal place. Okay, so this is right angled trig. Okay, you can see the right angle there. Um, so sine cos tan is what comes to my mind, okay? I don't have a hypotenuse and I don't have the bottom. So in order to find a side for sine cos and tan, you need an angle and then you need two sides. So I'm wondering, is it better to find this SP at the bottom or find the hypotenuse? Now I'm suspecting it's easier to get um, PS. Okay, let's go back to my diagram. So I need to find PS. Okay, so I hope that one um, makes sense. So I'm going to draw this triangle here. In fact, let me take this diagram with me. Again, and I'm going to insert a new page here because uh, I don't want to squish it. Okay, so that's the two diagrams now side by side. So just to, to re, re, reiterate, that's 14 degrees. We need to find X. We have right angled uh, trig. So we either need to find another side. Our choices are either find PT or find PS. PT is going to be harder to find because we don't have much information about the pole. So I'm reckoning PS is e easier to find, okay? Um, so I'm going to draw in PS here if I can. Okay, and what you'll find is when you do that, um, you'll end up bisecting this angle, okay? Um, because that's what an in-circle does. So when you have an in-circle, because remember told us at the start, the circle was an in-circle. You, if, if you know your constructions, an in-circle um, will bisect all the angles, okay? So I think we found that angle over there. Let me go back and see what it was. Um, 30.75 degrees. Okay, so therefore now, if I draw out just this triangle, so there's my R. Um, 
the size of that angle is going to be uh, 30.75 over 2, which is equal to uh, 15 point 15.375 degrees. Okay, uh, what else do we know? We found or the radius, it was 11.3. And what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find this one here. So that should be good. Um, so I'm going to label my sides. This is my hypotenuse because my right angle is down there. Um, this is the opposite. So I want the identity that links together opposite on hypotenuse. So silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America. So sign links together opposite on hypotenuse. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do then is sign of the angle. So 15.375 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to 11.3 over X. OK. Um, Bring up the x over this side so that you get x sine 15.375 is equal to 11.3 divide across by 15.375 so x is equal to 11.3 over sine 15.375 uh, i forgot to close my bracket And I'm getting 42.6197. So 42.6197 for X, okay? Which is this diagonal here, which is SP, which is my bottom here. Okay, so 42.6197. OK, so I hope that makes sense. OK, I'm going to rub out this triangle here. That's in the video anyway. OK. 15.375. OK, um, so that's that side. So now let's solve it for the height of the pole. OK, so again, um, my rhyme, silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America. This time I have my opposite side and my adjacent side. I know nothing about the hypotenuse. So it's a tan, okay? So therefore the tan of the angle, so tan 14 degrees equals X, what I need over adjacent 42.6197. Okay, so bring him up here. So 42.6197 tan of 14 degrees equals x. So multiply by, I had that number in my calculator, tan 14. Uh, so x is equal to 10.626 uh, meters, I presume. And give your answer correct to one decimal place. So x is equal to 10.6 meters. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new programme in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.